Back in Gamescom when we witnessed the launch of the RTX series of graphics cards from Nvidia, a lot of people, including us, were hopeful only to have those hopes slowly drift away as promises of real-time ray tracing, DLSS, you know, the next frontier of graphics. Well, it was a little bit more complicated than that. And even now, the green team is already five cards into the series, and still, Battlefield 5 is the only ray tracing supported game out there. But let's say you're an early adopter, or screw it, maybe you aren't. What's the deal with the RTX 2060, this card right here? The mid range touring card. Well, surprisingly, to me at least, we do get ray tracing. For some reason, I was thinking that maybe the 2070 was gonna be the last card to get ray tracing, but here we are. I guess I'm proven wrong. The RTX 2060 indeed does have tensor cores. So while we're at it, let's take a look at the specs. So we get a base clock of 1365 MHz and a boost clock of 1680. 1920 CUDA cores. Still, GDDR6 VRAM, 6 gigabytes. Memory data rate of 14 gigabits per second and a 160 watt TDP. And for price, it's 349 US dollars for the Founders Edition. So right away, it's looking like it's an indirect competitor of sorts to the GTX 1070, but with a price closer of that to the 1060 when it launched. Neat. Though some of the folks from NVIDIA that I've spoken to stress that it actually succeeds the 1070 Ti. So, we fired up our test setup. Intel Core i7-8700K, Asus ROG Z370E motherboard, 32 gigs of RAM, and a WD Black NVMe SSD for our game drive. And sure enough, they were right. Taking a look at 3D Mark Firestrike and Time Spy, the 2060 handily beats the 1070 Ti, and the same goes for Unigen Superposition, Rise of the Tomb Raider for DX11, and Deus Ex Mankind Divided for DX12. But as you're about to see in the next sets of benchmark results, I decided to take it a step up and put the RTX 2060 against the original Pascal flagship card, the GTX 1080. In all the Fire Strike tests, the 1080 still outscores the 1060, but when we take a look at Time Spy and Time Spy Extreme, ah, the gap is really close now. Moving on to Superposition at 1080p Extreme, the 2060 actually has a higher score, though it's left in the dust in the 4K Extreme test. Now let's take a look at regular old rasterized non-ray tracing games. For this, we have all the games set to the absolute maximum graphics settings. Here and there, anti-aliasing is turned off, but V-Sync is always off regardless of the title. So pretty much we have it set up for failure, but the reason we do this is we want to put the card to its absolute limit, and based on those results, you would dial back the settings to get the frame rates you want. So starting with Deus Ex Mankind Divided, at 1080p, we're getting a solid 60 66 FPS, though lower than the 1080 76 FPS. At 1440p, the gap is a little bit closer, 46 FPS versus 53. And at 4K, we only have 25 and 28 FPS for the two cards. So the gap is almost closed, but evidently, maybe it ain't a wise choice for 4K gaming. Now moving on to Far Cry 5, it starts to get interesting. 105 FPS on 1080p compared to the GTX 1080's 110 FPS. It falls apart at 1440p though, still getting a respectable 75 FPS, but that's 8 lower than the 1080's 83. At 4K, it's a little closer though, check that out. And with Ghost Recon Wildlands, the difference for all resolutions is only between 3 to 5 FPS. For Metro Last Light, huge difference at 1080p, but it's very close at both 1440p and 4K. Same thing for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, as you can see here. 1080p falls short, but 1440p especially, we're trading blows. In Rise of the Tomb Raider though, we're back to the start. Huge performance difference at 1080p, but the gap gets smaller as the resolutions increase. Now taking a look at a game where it's ideal to play with a high refresh rate monitor, let's check out PUBG. We're at 117 FPS at 1080p, which is great since you just need to bump the settings down a little bit to reach 144. And at 1440p and 4K, I mean not that many people play at those resolutions with this game, but look. It matches the GTX 1080 at 4K and even scores higher at 1440p. So maybe with a good overclock. Maybe in normal rasterized non-ray tracing games, like perhaps the RTX 2060 could match or even outperform a stock GTX 1080. But this review would not be complete without at least taking a look at ray tracing. 
or should I say DXR performance on Battlefield 5. So with DXR turned off, in both the North Africa and Rhineland story missions, we're getting a solid 60 FPS. With DXR set to low, in a relaxed scene like this one, we can still maintain that. But in a scene like this with tanks and explosions and lots of character models and textures, we lost around 15 FPS. Now comparing all the possible settings, DXR off, low, medium, high, and ultra, naturally, ultra looks the best. It's stunning. As you can see here with the great reflections of the fire on the puddles, as well as that nice shine from the moonlight on the rocks. But at what cost? You may lose half of your 60 FPS like we did in this scene. Despite being calm and lacking action, performance takes a big hit because just look at the amount of ray trace surfaces around the scene. And I know, this is obviously because aside from DXR, the game's graphic settings are at the ultra preset and Battlefield 5 is such a pretty game anyway and so I wouldn't mind bumping that down to high or something so that I can keep the DXR at high as well or even ultra. And I mean this is the 2060 right? I'm being realistic here. Here, by not expecting super smooth performance at the highest ray tracing setting. It may be the mid-range card in the series, but until we see a 2050 or 2050 Ti, right now, it's pretty much the entry level for ray tracing. So for this reason, is the 2060 worth it? Well, we have three things to look at to answer that question. First, it surpasses the GTX 1070 Ti in raw performance and is almost able to trade blows with the 1080, though it's still generally somewhat inferior. Second, you get access to ray tracing and in the future, DLSS. If you want to be an early adopter but don't have mountains of cash lying around to pick yourself up one of them big boys, RTX 2080 or 2080 Ti, then the RTX 2060 is great to get yourself into that world. And finally, third, it's a nice upgrade over last year's 60 card. Okay, so take a look at this. The GTX 960, GTX 1060, and RTX 2060. At their respective launches, they cost $199, $299, and $349. This is for the Founders Edition by the way. And seeing the jump in performance from each generation to the next, we see that for $100 more, the GTX 1060 pretty much doubled the 960's performance. And now, for just 50 bucks more, the RTX 2060 manages to not only keep up with last gen's lower-end enthusiast cards, but also throws in ray tracing and DLSS into the mix. So let's say if you have a 1070, 1070 Ti, 1080, or maybe even 1080 Ti, and you don't give a crap about ray tracing and DLSS and all of that, then, my friend, there is no need to bother. But if you're a 1060 user looking to upgrade, and even more so if you're still on a 960, then the 2060 is definitely a huge and worthwhile upgrade for you. But wait! While the 2060 has gained my respect, and even a lot more so than the 2080 and 2080 Ti and their ridiculous pricing, the hopes I mentioned in the beginning of this video, you know, the dreams of real-time ray tracing, DLSS, the future of graphics, those hopes still aren't back. Sometimes the worth of technology can only be seen and appreciated when its intended application actually exists. As long as Battlefield 5 is the only ray tracing enabled title out there for the foreseeable future, then despite this review being positive, it's incomplete. It might be entry level into ray tracing, but where is the ray tracing? So what do you guys think about the RTX 2060? Is it enough to get you into ray tracing? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And if you like this video, be sure to smash the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel for more content, hit the bell icon so you get notified every time we upload a new video, and be sure to visit yugatech.com for the latest tech news and reviews. This has been Joey, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.